Hello everyone, it's Justine. Today I am so excited to show you the new stitch die from Spellbinders. For January 2022, we now have a stitch club, hooray! And I am going to show you how I'm going to stitch on the actual paper and finish up this card, showing you exactly how I stitch. And also I will show you six finished projects at the end of the video that I made with this die. So the first part is the main die. It looks like this. Let me grab the actual die itself. So to make this light purple piece, you're going to use this big die and this will not cut out the center. So that's how that stays solid. If you would like the center cut out though, you just have to add this to the center and then that will cut out to the main center. And then if you'd like the dark purple piece, this one, you're going to use this cutting die and then this stitch die and that's going to pop the holes in to make it easy to stitch. Then to get the sentiment area, you use this piece and it has little etched lines on the edge just for fun and that will get you that piece and there's also a circle. Now I haven't made anything with the circle um, honestly because I just forgot about it <laughs> but I probably will be making some projects with this because I love stitching and it just, I don't know, it must have just moved on my desk or something, but you could layer all of these up together and have something that looks like this with your paper. Now you can use any color paper, any color of the thread, and you can create really beautiful things, but you just have to get creative, you know? <laughs> anyway, since I did not use that circle, I, added sentiments to my projects and I use sentiments from this stamp set which is the add-on it's called sentimental greetings January 2022 so it's the add-on since there is not a stamp set for the club items anymore this is full of nice sentiments especially the stitch with love would be really cute on a stitch card I haven't used it yet but I will be Anyway, let's just jump right into the stitching. Oh, I didn't mention this light purple piece with the actual die will create an A2 sized card front, but I took my paper trimmer and just cut off just a tiny bit because I would like to see another layer of border. So I did cut that down just a teeny bit. So let's talk about stitching. <laughs> So if you have seen some of my previous stitched videos, you know that I love stitching and I have stitched so many projects that I, I honestly have no idea how many. And I like to stitch on the go. So I have these little boxes that I use. Now this is kind of my new way of stitching on the go. I just taped with the craft tape a magnet. You can kind of see here. There it is. So when I'm stitching, I don't have to worry about my needle falling anywhere. I just, you can even just drop it around it and it will stick. I can close the box and know that that needle's gonna be there. So I've been using that. I have, of course have my little scissors with me for cutting thread. And now I've started carrying around one of these. Now this is the adhesive that comes in the card kits. It's a double-sided adhesive, and I think it is so helpful for starting and stopping the stitching. So I'll show you how I use that in just a minute. Then I have unfinished stitch projects, and you can see here, I've been using this die quite a lot and kind of playing around with some pattern paper. Now, these are simply still ideas, so I haven't stitched on them yet, but I will because I love stitching. So they're just there for another time. So let's talk about how I actually stitch. I typically use embroidery thread and that typically comes with six threads. So whether you use DMC or just an off brand, it's kind of up to you. I find that the DMC thread is a little less tangly. I know this says DMC, I know that is. I think these are both DMC. 
um, but you can see that they're shiny and they just tangle less so sometimes it is worth spending just a little bit more money and getting something nicer so it won't tangle as much um, I really don't have a lot of patience for tangled thread I usually just cut it and start over um, with a new thread <laughs> it's just my personality but anywho so with it coming six threads I take thread from here and then I split it in half so I end up with three strands and I have two sets of eight, three strands here so I'll show you one two three so there's the three and you want to keep those together and I just like to thread my needle with my fingers there's needle threaders out there that you can go ahead and use for threading your needles I don't know where mine is at the moment so oh well um, typically works pretty good when I thread my needle this way anyway so I just leave a tiny bit of a tail there nothing too crazy and then I end up with a needle on my thread so when I start stitching you can see here when I started stitching on here I just tucked in the tail from the beginning so you can do that and I'll show you how to do that and then I'll show you how I use the tape so if you're wanting to hide your tail all you do is go in through the back like I just did now my threads technically on the front of the card but I kind of like to work with the back because I like to see what's happening but I'm going to be flipping and flopping quite a lot here. So I went up through the back and then I'm going to come, if you will, this is the front, so I'm going to say down, down through the center and just kind of pull it tight. I'm holding that tail, just kind of give it a tight tug, not too tight to rip the paper, of course, but you know, and then I'm going to come up through the back, keeping it tight still again down through the center keeping it nice and tight and then I will just keep repeating that process up through the outside down through the center and that will hide my tail as I go up through the outside down through the center and once you start going <laughs> with your projects it just you just kind of start whipping it around and eventually when this is all covered this tail really is tucked in there so nicely that it's not going to come out it's a little different than an embroidery project where it's like on a cloth or cross stitching where it's on fabric that gets used like a dishcloth with that you're rubbing around that tail might not stay if you're doing something like that but on a card this card front will be glued down eventually and that is not going anywhere that little tail so it's okay if it just is lightly tucked in for a long winter's nap <laughs> up through the center one last time there's the hole there we go and down through the center now I've been stitching quite a few months now I think I started in May so I've been kind of getting you get faster at it as you go so you know if it takes a while at first don't worry it's okay um, now these are two different things that you could do here so you could now back stitch through like this go through what you just did and I usually do it once or twice just going underneath all those stitches and then grabbing my needle pulling and now at this point you could take your scissors and snip that or if you don't want to snip and you just want to keep going this is what I kind of like to do and you can see that I've done it a few times on this project already so instead of snipping the string I just went to the next hole so that's what all these lines are on the back me going to the next center so to do that sometimes you have to be a little bit careful with this die, it's very easy because the center is still in place and I don't have to worry about um, having thread go through large open areas like I would if um, there was an intricate design on the front that I would have to be cautious about. But 
all I'm going to do is move my thread and just kind of angle it. Now, I like to come, like I said, up through the outside. So I'm going to go to the next open hole here. That's the outside. Not the inside one because I like to go down through the center. So once again, I'm going to go up through the outside like this, down through the center, pull tight, and just make my way around. I'm going to go ahead and end this thread because I want to show you how I use the double-sided tape. So I just backstitch twice and then I'm going to snip the tail like that. So there's those two little fans. Now with the big fan. So I like to go up the outside as I've said. So I'm going to take my needle and just find the end, there it is, of this little tape and just a little piece of tape is going to go on my project so it won't be too bumpy or anything like that. And I'm just going to tape the tail down like so. Sorry I don't mind the ink on my fingers, it's the reality of stamping with black ink. <laughs> Okay, so now that that is secure, it's not going anywhere, I can go ahead and stitch this large fan area and it looks like I must have forgot to finish this area too once more. So since the tape is close to this area, I'm going to go ahead here first. You could start here, but I don't know. Sometimes when I use the variegated thread, which I have used on a few projects that I will be showing you at the end of this video, I like to kind of manipulate the thread color to go in just the right spots. So if I'm using a variegated thread and I have a dark corner on this side and I want it to kind of match a little but not be too matchy matchy, I will go ahead and stitch in different spots just to make sure that my thread is kind of doing what I want it to do and not just doing whatever it wants to do. I'll show you at the end what that looks like, but you'll have to be a little patient here. I think I've shown you all of the like tips and tricks, techniques for stitching so far on my channel in one video or another. If you're interested in seeing more stitch videos that um, I've done, I have a whole playlist on my channel called Stitching on Cards. And I think I've tried almost every stitch die that Spellbinders has come out with. And I am just thrilled, like I said, to try this stitched club die. So now here, this thread is a little too short to finish this large fan and this area, so I am going to have to start one more thread, which is just fine because I have, I have plenty, so that's not a problem. But I really don't want to take time fussing around with a short piece of thread, fishing it back and forth. So I'm just going to kind of show you what sometimes I will do, and I'll just take some tape like this and just tape it down. Yes, this is double-sided tape. You do not have to take the release tape off of it for it to work. And in seconds, that thread is taken care of. So to me, <laughs> I don't want to take time fussing around with thread. I would like to take time making more cards. <laughs> but that's just me. All right, let's thread my needle once again. I don't know why I use my middle finger and my thumb when I do this, but I just do. It's just kind of habit. I don't know if I picked it up from my grandma or what, but <laughs> there's certain um, crafting habits that, you know, you kind of pick up as you go along um, when I'm knitting and crocheting, which is not often at all. But when I do that, <laughs> I do certain things with my fingers and it just, it seems to work for me. So you just kind of pick that up as you go along with crafting, you know? <laughs> now this is a short little tail that I'm hiding so I'm just going to tightly pinch it with my fingernail here and just kind of backstitch a few times to lock that thread into place. I just need to make three stitches so 
It shouldn't take too much longer to finish this back. I'd say in general, as an experienced itch stitcher, a card that's almost fully stitched like this would probably take about two hours to cut, stitch, assemble. It's going to vary by the, the ability level of the stitcher. So just to let you know, I think it is really smart that Spellbinders is now doing the stitch die instead of putting it with the small die or the large die of the month and having a stitch die in one of those clubs because some people really just aren't stitchers and when they got that last year during 2022 some people were kind of complaining about it saying well this is a die die of the month and I'm not into stitching so why why are we getting another stitch die well for those people who don't like stitching they can just have a regular die of the month club now and the people that do like stitching can have a stitch die so everybody wins and if you're a person who likes both you can get both of them <laughs> all right so I'm gonna start with my tape here and just do the exact same thing going in through the center and up through the outside just making my way around this shape now I am ready to assemble the whole card now that I have finished all of the stitching. So I went ahead and put that purple paper on to my card base, my E2 size card. Then I'm going to adhere the main piece on to the card base and to do that I'm just going to use liquid glue because of all the thread and all the bumps it just seems to be the best way to go. Sometimes I will use double-sided tape or a tape runner, but it, sometimes it just works better with the liquid glue when the pieces are large like this for stitching. So we will do that. And I'm going to be covering up this huge center area, so I'm not concerned about any lumps in the glue or leaving like a bumpy trail, if you will. I'm going to just make sure to definitely get the edge and remember that I have cut the edge down just a tiny bit from the original die so it will be easier for other panels to be glued on but since I trimmed it down it will be a little complicated but it's fine it'll all work out so now that I have all the glue on I just have to be careful and place it on my card base and do that very cautiously if you will. There we go and then I'll just hold it down just for a second here to let the glue do its job. I do like using Barely Art Glue as my main liquid glue. I'll have that linked in the description if you're interested in buying it. I have it in this tiny bottle now because I just find it super easy to squeeze and it's just adorable. <laughs> and I like having cute things in my life so tiny glue bottles that are included in that. So for the next part, I will just glue that onto the center like so, using the liquid glue once again. And yes, shocking, I have a big old knot in the back and that is what it is. And it's just fine. And once it's glued down, no one will know. So, <laughs> except us who are watching this video. Now with stitching cards, you can go ahead and add different embellishments to corners. I'm not going to on this purple card just because I'm showing you a couple examples here just in a couple seconds of my other cards and I don't want to just take forever with the video. So I'll show you some of those in a minute, but embellishments really do kind of jazz up stitch cards even more than they already are 
but just plain too. The stitching is gorgeous, so you don't have to add embellishments. But there's a look at that finished card. I think it's just so pretty and I just love making them. Now it's time to show you the rest of my stitch cards with this die. So here's this one and we also have so here's this one i thought this would be kind of fun to add the wax seal to the center with that rose um, if you're interested in how i use wax on cards i have a whole video on my channel and i will link that video in the description you can also just find it on my channel but that wax was the white wax from spellbinders and that rose is one of the wax seals from spellbinders too so it just to me looks kind of pretty on this card especially with the rose pattern paper in the background so there's that and you can see the pearl embellishments on this one they're kind of fun now I have this one that I kind of made uh, using my school colors I'm a kindergarten teacher and I thought that I might need a card with school colors on it sometime so I definitely <laughs> made this one so I definitely was inspired by my school colors to make this one and I think the for use sentiment is perfect for like a graduation card or something to the, that. Now this one, I used the pattern paper from the card kit, this plant paper and this white paper that has the gold foiling on it. And then I used a die cut from the die cut pack and I used a chipboard sticker. So I went ahead into my card kit area and just kind of grabbed some of those elements to make the stitch card and I think it looks really sweet and it's the first time that I've done that with stitch cards and card kits but that's kind of the best part about getting multiple club items you can mix and match and make something kind of different. Speaking of different I have a lime green and black kind of card and I think this would be perfect for a birthday with the make-a-wish sentiment on it. Speaking of mis mixing and matching, I used the embossing folder of the month on the back of this one, and that is the embossing folder EOM Jan 22. It's just the regular embossing folder, it's not the 3D one. But with that being said, I think the 3D embossing folder would be really cool on this stitch die as well because of that area in the center of the other one. So. If you've liked any of these cards, I'd like to know which one is your favorite. I know I said I was going to show you six after, but I realized one of the stitch cards that I made, I cannot show you yet because it has a glimmered sentiment of a product that's coming out later in January and <laughs> I can't just show it now. So I will show that to you later in January, um, but <laughs> so you'll see this stitch eye once again. But anyway, let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. I think that my favorite would probably be this purple one, just because it reminds me of my mom. So <laughs> there's that. But I like all of them for different reasons, I suppose. But anywho, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have any questions about stitching or stamping, die cutting, anything card re related, stitching related, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to help you and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!